Hi, I'm Jason Victor Serenus. No, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> okay, go. Hi, I'm Jason Victor Serenus from Stereophile. Um, this time wearing my glasses, which my husband says make me look, look more intelligent. We try to do what we can. And I'm on the fourth floor of the Renaissance Schaumburg, where we're going to go to several rooms. And oh my goodness. Hi Jason, how are you? Room. Nice to see you This again. is amazing. I want to go to his room, which is the Constellation Audio Martin Logan room. And somehow he's here in the hallway. So why don't we go to your room together? Please come on over. We've got some great sound. We're showing the new, the new Revelation series, Preamp and Power Amp, the Pictor and Taurus models with the Martin Logan ESL 15 Renaissance speakers. And tell me, how is the show going for you? The show's today? going great. Attendance yesterday was very good. People are wonderful. Weather could be a little better, but the show's great. And, and, and the one thing I'll ask is, did you at all have the experience of a lot of dealers that are on the first day, the sound is still coming together? And it's Absolutely. Coming. Did you have to tweak things? We tweak things a little bit. We got things better and the equipment warms up and it's sounding really good now. Okay, cool. So I invite you to come on in and have a give a listen. Yay. This is our room that we're sharing with our dealer in Chicago, <laughs> Precision Audio and Video. Starting from the source, we've got the new Continuum Audio Labs Obsidian Turntable and Viper Tone Arm. It's being fed into the Constellation Audio Perseus Phono Stage. This is part of our performance series. The preamp and the power amps are from our new Revelation series. This is the Pictor preamplifier with separate power supply and DC filter. All of our amplifiers are either stereo or mono. In this case, we're using a pair of Taurus mono amplifiers driving the Martin Logan ESL-15 Renaissance loudspeakers. And your ca cabling is? All the cabling is from Cardus. Great. And what is kind of the total value of the system? You're looking probably about $150,000 from start to finish. Great. to the strains of Mahler Symphony Number no. 2. So that was, um, what you know, one of the things I feel is that we always hear about electrostats, that they're very, very transparent, and they're wonderful for voices. And I think that those speakers and this system really, especially when Irv turned up the volume, realized the richness of the viola da gamba and how absolutely thrilling it can be to be heard up close when you have a recording as good as the one that Tard, that Tard Garfinkel made. 
Um, and it's just amazing that Irv just happened to have that LP. So I, I thought the color saturation um, and the beauty of it, I mean, it wasn't totally transparent, but one can't, I, there's no way for me to tell, for example, how much that has to do with the actual recording and just ambient sounds, or what that has to do with the fact that we're listening to vinyl, or anything in the chain. But I just know that while I was very aware that it was recording, it was also, for me, a totally enveloping experience and really satisfying. So, um, I'm really interested to hear this next room. I haven't spent that much time with Verity loudspeakers and they, I've, they've never been in my system, but I have really like their sound and I'd love to see what they're doing, especially since there are, I think, from reading the show brochure, a number of premieres in this room. So we're going to go into a room, it's, it's sponsored with High Fidelity Services, who uh, distribute all the products that we're about to hear. Let's find out. Go around, but... And we won't be alone. There are a bunch of people in here, which is really interesting. And, and it's fine that people stay in and just hang out. And here we have Paul Manos and Julien Pelchat. Um, Julien is from Verity, Paul is High Fidelity Services. And could you please tell us what is happening in the system? Absolutely. Well, welcome, first of all. We are uh, very excited to be debuting a number of products, including Verdi, Verdi Audio's uh, spectacular Otello loudspeakers. Uh, we're also debuting from the UK, first time in North America, Trilogy Audio Designs. This is an integrated amplifier. Uh, it's driving everything in the system, 135 watts, uh, hybrid design. We're also using a TW acoustic table with TW acoustic arm, that's 10.5, and an Ortofon A95 cartridge. Digital front end is a Melco server being played through a playback design DAC. Cool, and what about the cabling? So the cabling uh, is another brand we represent from Greece, Signal Projects, fantastic cables. Um, uh, We've been using those for some time, very nice and compatible. We're also using Vibex uh, power conditioning and, and power cables. Great. Did, I'm, I'm curious, did you have, there's not that much room, there's, there is no room treatment in here. No. No. And it, did it just happen to work? I mean, how long did you spend positioning these speakers? You know, this was speech? a challenge. It really was a challenge, Jason. These were difficult rooms and, of course, having never been here before. We didn't know what to expect. So it was actually a little bit smaller, first off, than what was published. That's always a pleasant surprise. Yes. And it was narrower. We also were dealing with some room nodes. But long story short, it just required a great deal of time to find the proper. And, you know, of course, Julian, with his own speakers, is, is just sheer genius at the setup. So, so we overcome quite a bit. Did you need to reposition the speakers after day one or was no. it you so you got it? We How many it hours up. did you spend getting these speakers in the right position uh, with all the pressure on well, you? Well it took me about three hours. That's cool. So you okay. The man's a pro, he knows his speakers. <laughs> so let's go let's go listen. Yay.
so. I, I had heard that system in advance, and one of the reasons that I picked it is because I think it has a really lovely, warm sound. And it was very interesting hearing the different tracks that we listened to. Um, the Northern Lights, um, I heard one of the very impressive things is that no matter how big the soundstage got and how loud they got, I didn't hear any distortion. The speaker really held together with all those voices. I mean, compared to what I'm used to listening to at home with the Alexia 2s, I get a much bigger sound stage, etc. But for the size of those speakers and the size of the room, it was very, very nice. Then when we went to the Vidor, because I hadn't listened to any music like that before on it, I kind of heard the limitations of the low end. I mean, the speakers may go down low in a number, but you know, an, an organ is like organ shaking bass. That's what you should feel. And those speakers can't do that. So there was that limitation. And the other thing is, on the high end, I'm used to even more vibrant highs. Having said that, $65,000 system, totally listenable, nice range of music for anyone who likes this tonality, and I personally find it very, very appealing, I think this is a very, very winning system. So I think this is going to be really interesting. We just listened to the high fidelity um, sound system with the Verity speakers, and we're going into a far more expensive system. Uh, I've been in here before, MSB, some of the best digital components made, uh, big YG speakers. I expect this will be quite the impressive system. Also, uh, the person who is in charge of this system, who is Vince Galbo, who I have a feeling you're going to see in a second, um, is someone I've worked with a lot on power. Uh, Vince has told me a lot about how to do the wiring in my house. We've consulted on power conditioners. And he spends an inordinate amount of time at every show examining the power and finding what he needs to do to make this system sound as best as he can within the confines of a not very large space. So, hello Vince. Good afternoon, Jason. Could you please um, briefly tell us what each of these components are um, and then give, is, am I correct this is something like a $260,000 system? It is. Great. Why don't you run through the pieces? Sure. This is MSB Select Deck. This was the uh, this is our statement product, and um, it enabled us to pursue the uh, hybrid deck technology that allowed us to get rid of the preamp section and have the the digital ladders drive the amplifier and cables directly. So it was a new level of clarity, and it's been a dream for ten years. And this is the the technology that that allowed us to do it. And this trickles down to all our new decks. This is MSB's reference transport. This is new, just shipping. Um, it's an, a fourth evolution of our universal media transport, now called the Reference, and it utilizes a new uh, communications grade laser fiber optic communication system, and that allows the transport to be completely isolated from the DAC. There are no electrical connections whatsoever, and it uh, reduces the need for uh, you know, uh, grounding issues and power, that sort of thing. So it gets rid of all the noise that might be translated. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It's just the data. And it's also, uh, it's also um, uh, bit correcting, so it can tolerate huge errors and not have uh, uh, any dropouts. It's bit perfect. So, oh, very, ro very robust. So it's very different than my editor who, who, who cannot tolerate errors. Okay, <laughs> please continue. Okay. Well said. Uh, and the DAC, uh, this is an optional mono power basis. One power base is for digital, one is for analog. And then the reference transport has its own separate optional power base on the bottom there. And then we move to the MSB M204 mono block amplifiers. These are 200 watts per channel, uh, class A, and they have zero negative feedback, which is a feature that's very hard to get rid of in the ampli ampli uh, excuse me, amplifier science and um, we feel strongly that it has a lot to do with the digital sound, so to speak, um, or, or solid state sound. And um, so we've you know, removed the, uh, the negative feedback. 
The cables are Analysis Plus, it's the Gold Series. They're gold interconnects and they're gold speaker cables. So you know, they have great clarity and I like to say they pass the square wave, which should be a good thing. The um, power cords are their ult ultimate power cord, triple shielded. Uh, we like their products very much. These speakers are the Sonya uh, 2.2 with the new tweeter YG technology. YG Acoustics. Oh, sorry, YG Acoustics, thank you. Um, with their new tweeter technology and uh, a new crossover. And uh, they're more articulate and they've tracked very well to the improvements we've made recently. So they responded and uh, given us great sound. And the power uh, conditioning, etc., is? So the power conditioning we're using at this show is the Tweak Geek Stealth Dark Matter. Works very well on our DAC. And, <laughs> and I have uh, an industrial power conditioner on our transport. It's a, uh, it's a trip light and it's had some modifications. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for the power conditioning. Okay, so uh, listening, yay. Yes.
So, I have to tell you, if anyone sees the video that we've done in the, the other room where we played the Vidor and then listens here, this was an entirely different experience. First of all, the highs of the organ were really vibrant and alive as they would be in a church environment. That was really exciting. And then when it started getting louder and the lower pedals came in, I mean, it was like the whole thing went down. And that's what you feel. There's this bass foundation. The bass foundation of that piece is absolutely essential. And this system went, mm, here it is. And th there was so much more complexity of layers and layering of different lines, all of which came very, very clear. I wish I had turned up the volume even more. I didn't remember exactly how loud it got. So it really would have been moon shaking. But the dynamic range of this system went down to these teeny little sounds that I hope come through on the mics very, very little. And then you could feel the layering as it went back up. And then it got really huge. And the sound was up here and there. I mean, it was very, very exciting to me. Um, in Contus, I frankly didn't remember that the tenors were on the right and the basses were on the left. And a little part of me kept on going, huh, did he switch channels or do I just not remember? But the clarity of the lines and the place where the deep basses came in and then the correspondence with the high tenors I thought was very wonderful. There was one place where I felt probably because of the confines of the system of the space. It's, this is totally a space thing, not a system thing, where there was a little bit of a hole in the middle. But except for that, I, I thought it was equally impressive, and I'm really glad we got to compare that more limited range, voices only thing, to an organ which is just going full blast. Oh, one, one last thing, um, which was, you could hear when the registration changed, when they changed the, um, the uh, quality of the sound and they brought in like the sound of a different recording and all of a sudden the quality of the sound changed. These are things I absolutely did not pick up on the last system and here they were as clear as could be. It's a really fabulous system.